So what's it like to drive with this setup? Now I've been driving on this for almost a week now. I wanted everything to settle and I wanted to give you guys an honest opinion of what it's like on the road. Okay, so you will notice right away that everything is stiffer, okay? It is a slightly more jarring ride, but it's still supple. That's difficult to explain unless you experience it yourself. I had to actually experience it to be able to kind of see how it, to, to believe that essentially. So the BMW suspension system is very sophisticated. There's a lot of bushings in the rear and there's a lot of bushings in the front and it's well insulated from those hard jarring crashes that you'd get in another performance car. So what I have is I have a very stiff suspension but it's not crashing over the bumps. It is way softer still than a stock Scion FRS or Subaru BRZ, if that's a good comparison. Getting in out of this car into that car, all of a sudden you'll feel yourself crashing over bumps like this. You don't really get that. I get a little bit of more up and down motion than with a stock sport suspension, but it's not bad. It's stiffer, but not bad. Okay, so with the ride kind of out of the way, performance-wise, the first thing you notice is that the front-to-back motion is greatly improved. So when you're accelerating and when you're braking, you don't have as much dip, you don't have as much dip in the back. Okay, so that actually makes a big difference for uh, shifting. There isn't as much drama in between shifts when you let off the gas, clutch, shift, and get on the gas again. You don't go like this back and forth nearly as much. So that is up to the new dampers uh, in the front and the back, how stiff you set them, and the springs and how stiff they are. Okay, so essentially, that is a combination of the entire kit put together. However, I did drive the car for about a week with just the rear Coney shocks in. Okay, so I can comment on that. That actually drastically changed the ride. It made it feel a little bit stiffer in the back, but it controlled that front dip quite substantially. That was just with the stock springs, okay? So if you were going to just do dampers, I can comment and tell you that it does make a very noticeable difference. I put just Coney Yellow dampers in my Saab with the stock springs, and it was, a, like, it was very noticeable. You feel it in the corners, you feel it in accelerating and decelerating, pretty much everywhere it feels good. Okay, so now the rest of the performance aspect of the car, what we have now is we have a car that is still kind of supple over bumps, but it locks itself in in the corners. So you've probably heard people describe BMWs as being on rails. Okay, so now with this setup, I lowered it down. You saw in the picture there, I lowered it down uh, a, a little bit, not very much past the sport suspension. And I've got the rear shock set at the medium setting and the front shock set at the softest, okay? And then what I did was I opened up my front sway bar so it was the softest setting and I've tightened the rear sway bar, okay? So that is just my current setup. I have to test this on the track and I need a corner balance and all that stuff. But it doesn't matter because right off the bat you can feel how much of a difference it actually makes. So when you enter a corner, First of all, the turn in is much crisper, okay? So there isn't as much body lean when you turn in. The front end locks itself in much more severely. And then when you start to notice it the most is as you increase the speed in the corner. It's almost like the faster the corner, the more you notice it. So in a high speed sweeper on the track, you'll notice that it really, really locks itself into the corner, okay? You can feel it on just any conventional corner here. So I've got a couple uh, sweepers here. And I'll kind of describe what I'm talking about. So I'm in third gear. So moderate speed around this corner. Yeah, right, boom, right there. It's, it's locked in, all right? And it just kind of stays there. No drama going around the corner. I've got a little bit of lean from the front because of the sway bar setup. Here's another even tighter corner. Heel toe into second. We go around. Stuff's moving around in my car. And there goes the tail a little bit, okay? So that is a complete different feeling stuff is just flying around in my car right now. So that's a completely different feeling from the stock sport suspension. This is a, a, a highly recommended setup. Coney Yellows with ground control springs. When you buy ground control springs as a kit, they come with Coney Yellows, but you saw I had to modify mine, right? So these are meant to be together. I have the, uh, uh, don't quote me on this, I think I have the 450 and 500 pound weight springs. So 500 pound weight in the rear, and 450 in the front. I'll put the actual numbers in the description because I don't trust my memory right now. But that is pretty substantial over the uh, stock sport springs. But to be perfectly honest, I think I could deal with an even stiffer spring in this car. 
So if you're really, really looking for track focused driving, you could even go stiffer than that. I'm not sure how the Kona Yellows would match up with a stiffer spring, because from the reading that I've done, it seems like the Kona Yellows are, are a lot more suited to this spring weight, because this is what ground control sells. Okay, so I'm gonna go over these, these sweepers again here. Boom, right there, it locks in, and there's no more drama. Okay, it feels very on rails. What that means is it's almost like I just start turning the corner and my car is now hooked up onto a rail system and it just keeps it going around the corner without any issue. There's no extra lean, there's no jumping and chattering, it just locks itself into the ground, okay? That's why dampers are important. They, they're what keep your tires in contact with the ground and give you the most possible grip around the corner. If your dampers are worn out and you have just springs, any little bump will upset the car. Okay, that's what you don't want, especially if you're driving aggressively. That's how you get yourself into trouble really quickly. So, as I said, overall, this is a very, very good package, and I can definitely recommend it. Now, I looked at Bilstein, Bilstein um, as well, and they're very good, but I like the adjustability of the Kona Yellows for that price point. Um, so, a big shout out again to Northern Performance in uh, the Toronto area who hooked me up with these. Um, and gave me lots of good recommendations and they're very quick with their service, right? So I've got, again, nothing but good things to say about them. And I, I'm gonna go back there, I think, for maybe some new brake pads when these, are, when these are done. Okay, so here's accelerating. Second gear, I'm gonna shift into third. Okay, so there's a pause and a thump in the back, but I don't, I'm not going forward and backward very much, which is quite noticeable, actually very noticeable. That's the first thing you notice. Right Now, as for ride height, I don't want to go much lower because I heard uh, of, a, of a guy who went over a speed bump too quickly when he had his Coney Yellows drop down and it damaged them to the point where he couldn't adjust them anymore. We don't want that, right? So I'm going to keep the ride height as low as I can without thinking that I'm running out of travel room on the shock and I'm going to get it corner balanced. Again, a corner balancing is very important if you are serious about balancing the car properly. Okay, so I'm going to drive this car. I'm going to track it right now because I can't get a corner balance appointment until like the end of this year, maybe even next year, right? Because the guy that I want to go to um, is very busy right now because fair, he's very good. So I want to make sure that I get this done properly. So I just got an alignment done to make sure everything's going straight and it, it is, everything's fine now. I'm running zero toe and like negative 1.6 degrees of front camber, okay? Which is about the same as my rear camber. I want more negative camber for more front grip, but I don't have the ability to do that right now because I've maxed out the, the built-in adjustments. By the way, when you lower the car, you get a little bit more negative camber just because of the suspension geometry. So that is about all I have to say about the Kona Yellows and ground control springs. Um, I think that if you are considering doing this and you don't do your own work, it's not a bad idea to save up and do the whole package at once because then you don't have to pay someone labor on two separate occasions to put the, your, your regular springs on your new shocks and then take the shocks out again and put the ground control springs on. So I know it hurts, save up a lot of money and do it all right at once because it's, it's just gonna be a better overall thing for you. It's gonna cost you less in the long run. I've been where you are before. I know what it's like, you're just like, oh, but I just wanna lower my car a little bit. That's fine, but if you put too stiff of springs and too low of springs on the stock shocks, then we have the potential issue of blowing them, depending on how old your shocks are, obviously. And those springs probably won't be matched for the, the damping rate of the shock, okay? So you want a sport shock with a sport spring. Make sure they're matched. Talk to both manufacturers and make sure that your springs and your shock choice match with each other. So that's about all I have to say about this. Um, I've got lots more reviews coming on performance parts, okay? So over the winter, I'm gonna be doing a lot of maintenance on this car, and I'm gonna keep up with my car reviews. We've got lots of cool stuff coming in that front, by the way. So ideally, I'm going to do, just off the top of my head, I'm gonna do Vano seals for sure. I'm gonna do window regulator, do the zip tie method, show you how to do that. I'm going to maybe do spark plugs. I'm going to do some, there was something else, I don't remember what it is. I'm sure you'll see the video at some point. Um, also, big news, uh, apparently I got approved as a tribe leader for Drive Tribe. No idea what that means exactly yet, they're going to tell me really soon, and I don't know if I'm going to be allowed to post content from here on there and vice versa, I don't really know how it works, but hopefully you can follow me on Drive Tribe as well, um, because that's going to be pretty exciting. If you don't know what Drive Tribe is, that's uh, 
Jeremy Clarkson, Richard Hammond, and James May's new uh, online motoring platform, uh, which should be pretty big. Apparently, they've got millions of subscribers to it already. So I made a bid to be the E46 BMW Drive Tribe guy, and they accepted my bid. So I'm now the tribe leader for E46 BMWs, I guess, which is pretty crazy. Didn't think that was going to happen. So I, this is a bit long-winded, I'm sorry. Um, I will talk to you soon about more mods coming. I'm going to do a review of my rear trailing arm bushings as well, which I just installed, and uh, lots more to come. See you later.